Tim McCoy, Reverend Tim, youth pastor for Trinity Baptist Community Church. Um, this is going to summarize uh, today's lesson and our section dealing with the acronym MAPS. Um, this whole section has been about um, how we can trust the reliability of scripture, uh, kind of stemmed from comment one of the young people said that kind of made me nervous, so I thought it was a good time to review. Um, 2 Peter 1.3, um, God by his divine power has given us everything into life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by his virtue and um, power. And um, that's kind of was our memory verse, uh, theme verse, uh, section verse. But um, the acronym that we've studied and what we're culminating today is MAPS. Um, the M stands for manuscript evidence, basically how the manuscripts were tested over time. Some of the things that we came away with in memorizing is there's a bibliographic test, eyewitness test, external test, we talked about all of those. Over 14,000 copies of Old Testament uh, manuscripts and, and, and bits and pieces and over 5,000 for the new. It's over 500,000 pages of um, uh, manuscripts, uh, some predating um, um, Christ's birth by several centuries. Um, so that was one thing that we did. Archaeology, we talked about what it was, kind of drew a little picture about the different layers through the earth and how they dig and find and date. We also watched a video, um, Fragments of Truth on YouTube, that kind of dealt with a little bit of how um, scrolls were, were designed, papyrus, and, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> but here in archaeology, there's a couple examples. One in the Old Testament, um, where through archaeological finding, we did find, even though critics said it didn't exist, that King Nabonidus, when he had uh, left on a trip in Babylon, actually named the co-regent Belshazzar. And that was for long uh, used to be uh, to criticize the book of Daniel as to whether or not uh, its veracity was, was accurate. Um, Sir William Ramsey, who is a Nobel Prize winner, um, and he's also a trained archaeologist, uh, set out to disprove things in the book of Luke and Acts. And through several Mediterranean trips and digs, he actually is one of the most noted people to become a convert uh, from a critic. Uh, so these are just examples of how archaeology is used to um, uh, again, give us a reliability tech and test for, for the Bible. Um, we culminated with predictions today and prophecy. That's actually what it is, prophecies or predictions um, about the Bible. Namely, crisis is centered all throughout the Bible. There's prophecies predating his death by a couple centuries um, that he would be the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that um, he would be born in a particular town, um, that he would die among thieves, that his clothing would be gambled over, that um, he would uh, uh, be buried among the rich, um, uh, even that, um, even though his side was pierced, he would not have a broken bone. Um, and um, um, the last one that goes in with that, and, and again, these predictions, when we look at how predictions happen, um, some through the help of archaeology and other textual criticism, predates his existence by several, uh, a couple hundred uh, centuries, and, and uh, way outside the, the, the means of fraudry or making up, and uh, that leads us into statistics. We talked about with the young people today what statistics stood for, how it's used in today's business, how it's used with AI, social media platform. Some of them had never heard of statistics and what an inference is, what probability is, things of this nature. But when you look at the statistics associated with all this, the Bible's written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors, um, in three different languages, uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. Um, it, it just, uh, it, 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 uh, I'm at a loss for words, but you, you cannot, the statistical support uh, far outweighs any type of collusion, coercion, fabrication, that people wrote this after the fact and went back and tried to cooperate their stories to make sense. So again, I'm not expecting my young people to be textual critics or grammarians or anything like that, but when um, their beliefs are challenged, 
uh, asked so it came from the Bible. I do want them hopefully to remember this acronym, um, MAPS, uh, and to be able to talk about the manuscript evidence, the archaeological support, uh, the predict predictive prophecy, and statistical support uh, kind of gives us uh, a confidence that the, the Bible is divine rather than human in nature and that we can trust it for uh, life and godliness, um, as long as we have a relationship with him uh, through his Holy Spirit who guides us. That's gonna conclude. This also I'm, I'm using for a new upcoming social platform we call Tete Next Generation. Think about it so we can talk about it. Next Gen is because I'm, I'm nearing 40 years and, and teaching Sunday school and young people and, and hopefully this is something that will, will propel them and be a resource uh, going into the next generation when, when I'm no longer here. Uh, so again, Tete Next Gen, think about it so we can talk about it. Advent, I asked them if they knew what it was. It's our upcoming season. I did create an acronym utilizing every word of the word Advent to try to give an idea and, 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 and to what his, his, his coming stands for and what it means to us as Christians. So look forward to it. Uh, be blessed. Uh, join us. Support us. Pray for us. Uh, all in God's name. Thank you. Have a good one.